This is Alex Kiss. This statistics video is on the notorious p-value. The reason we put the word notorious in the title is that the p-value is incorrectly defined in over 80% of introductory statistics textbooks. So the purpose of this video is to provide the correct definition of the p-value and just as importantly go over different things that the p-value does not tell you. A common error made when interpreting statistical results is linking statistical significance with practical importance. We can't emphasize strongly enough that statistical significance does not equate to practical importance, and likewise practical importance does not guarantee statistical significance. Often we witness students or even experienced researchers being obsessed with obtaining small p-values in hopes of giving their study a wow conclusion. The question you should instead be asking yourself is was I able to detect a change or difference that other researchers would agree is meaningful? There are two divisions in statistics. Descriptive statistics, which are a presentation of the characteristics of data set, including the mean, standard deviation, and frequency distribution of data values. And inferential statistics, which are more advanced than descriptive statistics and are used to make inference to a wider population based on a smaller sample. So we're extrapolating our results from our small sample. Classic example of inferential statistics is the example of predicting voting results before an election. Since it's not possible to ask every eligible voter which party they would vote for, we can only project the voting results of the whole nation by collecting a sufficient sample of voters. Keep in mind, research does not exist in a vacuum. We cannot be 100% absolutely sure about our research conclusion. There's always a chance, even a tiny slight one, that we may be wrong. The sample we collect won't be a perfect representation of the bigger targeted population. Why is this? It's because the collected sample does not cover the whole population. We logistically, as well as financially, are not able to sample everyone, so we need to draw inferences about the population from our sample. This opens the door to our star tonight, which is the p-value. Keep in mind when you run tests in practice, you have a certain statistic of interest, your test statistic. Now the p-value is the probability of your test statistic being at least as high as the one you obtained, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Null hypothesis commonly being the one representing no change or no difference. So the p-value is telling us how close our data matches that of the null hypothesis. A high p-value means that we have a higher probability of it being consistent with the null hypothesis, whereas a low p-value means that we have a lower probability of it being consistent with the null hypothesis. The standard convention for p-values is to have a cut point less than or equal to 0.05 as that denoting statistical significance. So let's go over why the p-value is the basis for interpreting statistical results. We'll do this by looking at a hypothetical example. So in this example, a social scientist would like to examine if adults who are more active in doing volunteer work are more likely to vote. So our null hypothesis in this case is that the likelihood of voting for an adult who puts in more than two hours of volunteer work every week is the same as that of his or her counterpart who participated in volunteer work for less than two hours weekly. This researcher needs to show that any discrepancy that exists between the two groups in voting behavior is due only to hours of volunteer work. In this case, other factors, education, income, etc., should be treated as control factors in the statistical models. Say this researcher did a perfect job of using the right statistical model to analyze the data. So how does the p-value in the data output support or disagree with the research argument? The commonly used standard for statistical significance, as we stated earlier, is less than 0.05. Often, however, to reduce the chance of type 1 error, which is incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis, you may see p less than 0.01 or even a stronger 0.001 being used. To continue with the previous example, if the statistical results indicate that the p-value 
is 0 0.049. Would that be sufficient to jump to the conclusion that doing volunteer work for two hours every week is a strong predictor of voting behavior? Well, the answer to this is both yes and no. And let's go over the different components. Yes, because we can say volunteering is a statistically significant factor, but no, because we cannot say it is a strong predictor, since the strength of the predictor variable is decided by the magnitude of its effect size, not just the p-value. So the take-home messages for statistical significance and p-values are as follows. 1. Statistical significance must be taken in connection with the existing literature in your field. The results do not stand alone by themselves. You need to have a well-established conceptual framework guiding the development of your hypothesis and the interpretation of statistical findings. The second point, statistical significance should not be the only goal of your research. Bear in mind the picture of a forest instead of a single tree. Statistical significance should not be interpreted as practical significance, importance, or meaningfulness. The third point, the p-value does not tell you that your results are due to chance. This is a common misconception. It can tell us that the pattern of data we observed is consistent with what would occur by chance, but it is not directly due to chance. And the fourth point, if the p-value is greater than 0.05, we do not accept the null hypothesis. We don't know the true state of the null hypothesis, only that our data has failed to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Should you like further information on statistics, feel free to check out our app called Statistics Professor. As well, you can visit our website www.akisconsulting.com for any statistical inquiries.